clicking, and then when it gets so turned, it stops. Here yeah, I broke. Yup. That we this could is, get off. That is pretty common. Really careful. Well, look, that goes right here, and that's yeah. why we're hearing all that crunching sound. It? it was breaking yes. up the gear. It's breaking up the gear. <laughs> it's got metal gears everywhere except there. So we're gonna see if we can find a replacement for it. We got to looking around, and we found that you could get them on eBay for about two hundred fifty-two dollars to replace the whole truck. You could buy them from Bachman for about three hundred and fifty dollars, or we could go with the Northwest Short Line, which was about sixty dollars for all four. Okay, so we're gonna do. So let's see, this is the gear. So it kind of comes out, just slides out actually. Just kind of pull it out. Just pull it out. It comes down once you have this bottom plate out. I removed the little side. Okay, and now it's out. Look. Lost some little BBs, that's not good. Those little bearings came from somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Look at this little BB right here. You see it? I'm not that's, sure where that came from. That's part of the problem. Yep, see, here's our gear that's split. Can you see the split gear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But now we so now can we're gonna fix do, it. Yeah, we're going to take this top off. Yeah, and then we can fix it. That's right, there's a little washer under this one. Yeah. So this comes off, and then there's a little washer. Yeah, which we need. Yep, so don't forget about that little washer. So we're gonna pull this wheel off, right? Yeah. So it just comes off now. I'm gonna put this back in here. Oh, zoom out. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this screw back in here so we don't forget it. Yeah. That goes over here. That's the most important. Okay. Yep. So now we also have this one washer up here. Mm -hmm. Put that yeah. off. And then we're gonna pop this out. So here's what your axle looks like. So the next thing we're gonna do is get this bearing off. And so to do that, we're gonna come over here to this vise. So look, the vise is like this. Here it is mounted in the vise. Don't tighten it, but get it close. Not so tight. That's right. You need a vise that doesn't, this one I got very lucky. This vise will work and it doesn't, uh, the teeth are just perfectly spaced. Just get it where it's comfortable. Make sure it's not too bumpy. That's right. Oh, I see what. Why? Yeah, actually, if you're gonna put it in the vise, because that gear is broken anyways, it's gonna work best if we just break this gear off all the way. And let's see, where's our where's our crack? It's right here. Which is not good. All right, now go ahead and put it back in the vise. Look, don't tighten it down on the axle. So you want it to be able to come down. And look, you notice how I have this uh, towel underneath it? That's so when it comes down, it's gonna drop on that towel and not hit the floor. So you wanna protect as much as you can. Now, I'm using a brass drift here. See that thing right there, that, that shiny brass? And that's to uh, protect you know, the, the threads and the, the shape of the axle. You could also use like a block of wood. I wouldn't recommend just hitting straight on with a hammer. You wanna use something in there. And then, look, it'll come out. So you want to support that bearing as much as you can, so you're not just uh, forcing the outer edge off, for example. And then uh, it worked pretty good, so the bearing is off. So here's a little comparison of the new one, the Delrin, from Northwest Short Line, and the old one, the Bachman. Now what's really interesting about that Bachman, you see that ridge right there? It's just a lot of material missing, and I think that's what makes it really fragile, is that there's that groove in there. Meanwhile, this Delrin is nice and solid, and heck, they could even extend it out. I'm kind of surprised they didn't just make it even fatter than it is. It wouldn't hurt anything. And I might even write to them and say, hey, just uh, make this like twice as wide. I don't think there's any problem with that. And that would be much, much stronger. But okay, fine. So now that we're here, what we need to do is this. We need to get this centered on there. And we need it to get down to where all those ridges are. So I'm using a socket to try and apply as even pressure as I can. And I'm finding the smallest socket I can that fits over the shaft, okay? Because what you really want to do is uh, be as tight to that shaft as possible and then just hammer it down and it goes pretty quick. You'll notice I have the vise open wide enough so that it's sitting as flat as it can on the vise. And uh, again, this is just a good idea. You could even put a block of wood under there, but it didn't seem like it was damaging anything. You're not having to hammer too hard. And then the gears got positive engagement and now we need to get the bearing on. So this will require a smaller socket. You want a socket that is touching about the inner race of the bearing, right? You don't want to be hammering in the middle. You don't want to be hammering on the outside. You want to be hammering on that inner race. I think I ended up using a 732nd here, but I, I don't remember. So go through your socket set, find something that fits really nice and is touching that inner race of the bearing. 
because if it's not touching that inner race, you're likely to screw up your bearing. And then just tap it real, real slow, get her in there, and uh, it'll, it'll go back on. So tap, tap, tap. And just make sure it's seated there where it needs to go, and that it's still rolling, and you're ready to go. You're ready to reassemble. So uh, don't be like me and forget to put the spacer in there, because I totally did that. And then you screw it in. But OK, fine. That's the way this goes. And then, of course, there's another washer right there on the outside. So put on that washer, put in your screw, make sure everything is seated well, and then uh, screw it in. This really wasn't too bad of a repair. Not as bad as I feared it was. OK, then the thing you do now is you just slide this back in. I had actually taken out the uh, pieces, the gears on the side that make the Shea part work, and I don't think you have to do that. I think you could have just slid these out, so that'll even save more time. You just pull the bottom plate, and then you pull the uh, the wheels just straight out. And it's really nice. That actually isn't too bad. So they just slide right back in. Make sure you're getting positive engagement with the gears. You might have, you know, if you didn't get your gears seated right, now's the time to find out. Take a look in there, you know, examine your repair. Be kind of slow, be careful. Now, if you're like me and you did take out the uh, gears up there, it's a good time to put them in after you've got the wheels in. There's uh, these little side supports that go in there that are held in by screws. Everything else just kind of slips in. It's not too bad, actually. So just get that back in the way you got it out. So I got this cool little magnetic bracelet, and it has multiple slots, so I was able to keep everything segregated, all different screws, and that made it much easier to put together. Uh, okay, now once everything's back together, go ahead and reconnect the kind of Shea drive, which in the real train would be the pistons driving the wheels, but here's the wheels driving the pistons, and now it's time to test it. I can smell bridle. That's pretty cool. The backside is not a